Hi, welcome to Sci-Fi Sunday Night. I'm Carrie Jackson from X96's Radio from Hell Show. I'm Jeff Weiss, film critic with Deseret News. We're camped out here in the Carmike Ritz 15 Hollywood Connection Lobby. Why? Yeah! We're in line for Star Wars Episode 2. That's right. Uh, Jeff and I have camped out for movies for years, and all the Star Trek movies, all the Star Wars movies. 1980, you remember Empire Strikes Back? I totally ruined the movie for you while we were waiting in line, because I told you that Vader was Luke's father, you remember? Yeah, you bastard. Well, guess what? I'm going to ruin this movie for everybody tonight. Every time you see Jeff put his fingers in his ears, that's your cue to turn down the sound if you don't want to hear what's going to happen in Episode 2. You ready? Go! Jar Jar will become the senator of Naboo. R2-D2 can fly and is a last great act of revenge against Anakin. Watto will place a gay microchip in C-3PO's brain. Maybe it was a British microchip. I just don't remember. Boo. In 30 minutes, uh, Carrie's going to completely spoil the movie, but here's Enterprise. You're watching Sci-Fi Sunday Night. You suck. I know. You're watching Enterprise on Sci-Fi Sunday Night. I'm Jeff. This is Carrie. And I'm going to completely ruin Star Wars Episode 2 for you right now. If you don't want to hear what's going to happen, turn down the sound on your TV now. Obi-Wan is going to get his own jet fighter, a little fighter spaceship. Yoda's going to be in a major lightsaber duel, and we're finally going to get to see him kick ass. And we meet Boba Fett's father, Django, who we find out is a retired circus clown with the public circus. Boba is very ashamed. Clown? Of... Let's get back to Enterprise on Z24. Oh, that was an excellent episode of Enterprise. <laughs> Welcome to Sci-Fi Sunday Night. I'm Carrie Jackson from X96. And I'm Jeff Weiss, film critic with the Deseret News. And we are camped out here at the Carmike Ritz 15 Hollywood Connection. We're waiting in line, we're first in line, for Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones. Now, this movie doesn't open until May 16th, so needless to say, we've got a lot of time to kill. Let's start killing that time with this episode of Deep Space Nine. It is called Looking for Parmok in All the Wrong Places. Dude, that, that title's totally ripped off from that Eddie Rabbit song. But we find out that Parmok is a Klingon word, and it means love with more aggressive overtones. And where I come from, you can get arrested for that sort of thing. We got two Star Trek veterans in this episode. First of all, we got Joseph Ruskin. You may recognize him as Galt from the uh, classic Star Trek episode, Gamesters of Triskelion. I bid 400 quantities on that character actor. He'll make an excellent drill thrall. Also in this episode is Phil Morris. Now, uh, you'll recognize Phil Morris as Jackie Childs. That's Kramer's lawyer from Seinfeld. But he has a Star Trek past as well. He, when he was a kid, he was in Miri, the classic episode. He uh, shared a moment with Shatner on the bridge in Star Trek III. He tried out for the part of Cisco on Deep Space Nine. Did not get the part, but he did get the part as the Klingon in tonight's episode. Yeah, here he plays Thopak Shakur, the famous Klingon rapper and a member of Grilka's posse. Yo, Grilka, got your back. Because tonight's episode is all about love, we decided this would be a perfect opportunity to present this educational feature called Dating Tips for Geeks. Yeah, now Carrie and I are geeks. Oh. No, 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 it's true. It's true. Uh, but over the years, we've learned a lot about the do's and don'ts of geeky guys dating normal women. Mostly the don'ts, I'm afraid. We'll have our first and most important lesson coming up in 25 minutes. But in the meantime, we're waiting in line for Star Wars Episode 2. And we're watching Star Trek reruns with you. It's Sci-Fi Sunday Night on C24 TV. Who better to teach geek dating tips than two of the biggest geeks you know? We've made all the mistakes so you don't have to. Dating tips for geeks lesson one, getting real. Geeks, take a long look at Tony. Do you think she can tell a hobbit from a troll? Is she going to be impressed by your action figure collection? Will she be happy living in your mother's basement? Lesson one is, girls like this don't really exist. And if they do, they're out of our league. And now, dating tips for geeks, lesson two. My favorite starship captain? Well, Captain Kirk. Everyone knows that Kirk beats Picard any time. Sorry, girls like this don't exist either. And if they do, they're still out of our league. And coming up in 15 minutes, more dating tips. You're watching Sci-Fi Sunday Night on Z24 TV. Sci-Fi Sunday night on D24 TV. I'm Carrie. This is Jeff, and we're waiting in line to see the new Star Wars movie. This is an activity so geeky that it makes it difficult to get a normal girl to talk to you, let alone get a date with her. But what if she says yes? That's why we're here, your geeky guidance counselors. We've got some tips for you. By geeks for geeks. It's geek dating tips. Number one, shower. <laughs> Number two, 
Use soap this time. You may even want to try this new uh, invention. It's called deodorant, and it's good friend antiperspirant, because believe me, nothing stinks worse than geek desperation sweat. Yeah, and number, th speaking of which, number three, do not wear your Star Trek uniform. This is very important. No dress uniforms, no uh, Jedi cloaks, no uh, fanboy t-shirts, no sweatpants. Why don't you talk to your dad about borrowing one of his shirts, you know, the kind with buttons. Yeah, uh, number four, don't meet at your place. The last thing that you want is for her to see you in your natural environment, because what you refer to as the Fortress of Solitude, she's going to refer to as Stinky Sweaty Hellhole Apartment. Let's move the date forward to dinner. And tip number five, do not order your meal in Klingon. Uh, this goes without saying, and, and while we're on the subject of conversation, nothing kills a date quicker than repeating old Monty Python routines. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, anyway, we've got more tips, but the director's telling me oh. we need to wrap this okay. up. Well, let me just end it and tell you the most important rule for all successful geeky guy normal girl dating. Get a, hope, uh, get a high profile, high paying radio or TV job. Do they pay much at the newspaper, Jeff? Sorry to hear that. I uh, hope your dates are successful. Later on, uh, when she dumps you, that is, we'll have an attorney on to explain your uh, rights as far as restraining orders and things like that. Let's get back to Deep Space Nine on Z24 Sci-Fi Sunday Night. That's okay, buddy. Girls like smart guys, too. Get in line, geeks. It's Sci-Fi Sunday Night. Yeah! Well, that ends another chapter in the long and terrible saga of Mr. Worf, the girly Klingon. Boy, if that isn't the truth. I mean... Quark needs advice on Klingon women, and who does he go to? He goes to Dax, because she's more of a Klingon than Worf is. Well, she's definitely wearing the pants in that relationship. And, and look at Worf, he gets his manhood questioned like four times in this episode, and each time the person who questions it walks away unharmed. I mean, for a Klingon, that's pretty sad. Oh, you want to talk about sad? I mean, he listens to opera. Drinks prune juice. If not for his receding hairline, he could be my grandma. You know who I'm jealous of in this episode is Miles O'Brien. I mean, take a look at it. His wife urges him to take a romantic weekend away with another woman, a woman that he's living with. I mean, it's like a new series. Miles O'Brien, deep space polygamist. No, no, see, I think it's more like Three's Company with Dr. Bashir playing the role of the, the pesky and jealous Mr. Roper. Well, that wouldn't work, though, because Jack was gay on that show, right? No, that was what they wanted you to think, And dude. I fell for it. Well, from the looks of things, you better get in line for Star Wars Episode Two, or you won't be able to see it until November. Next week on Sci-Fi Sunday Night, we got an episode episode of Enterprise, it's called Vox Solus, and I don't remember which one that is. Oh, it's the one where T'Pol looks really hot, and she and Trip argue, and she fails to understand human behavior. Oh yeah, that was my favorite. Deep Space Nine next week is called Ascent, otherwise known as Quark and Odo's Excellent Mountain Climbing Adventure, where they argue up one side of the mountain and fall in love down the other side. But can a Ferengi bartender and a shape-shifting mall cop share an apartment without driving each other crazy? They certainly are an odd couple. Well, thanks to the Carmike Ritz 15, thanks to Janie Fleet, and thanks to you for watching. Remember, geeks, it's just a TV show. Good night, everybody.